Okay. Those of you, some of you might have been to these sessions before, but those of you who haven't, I'll just kind of go through some of the housekeeping stuff. Um, at any point, you can ask a question, any point at all. You can do that by adding it to the chat function at the bottom of this. You could also email mail myself or Miss Yasmin directly if you didn't want to um, use the chat function. Okay, and we'll check our emails as well. But the easiest way to get a question on is simply to add something to the chat function there. We're going to have two guest speakers today. Very lucky to have Dr. Ong from Newcastle University and Dr. Chian from RCSI um, Padana in uh, um, Penang Medical School. Um, so two very um, good speakers on two very different institutions with very different remits uh, and also uh, very different you know, outlooks in terms of what they're going to be talking about. Uh, so Dr. Ong is going to be talking far more broadly about a career in medicine and what it looks like. I think we're going to have a slightly more technical conversation about what it looks like to study at RCSI as well. These talks should both be about 15, 20 minutes each, and then we'll have a chance for the Q&A at the end. So anytime you think of a question, just add it to the chat. OK, I'm going to hand over now to our first speaker, which is going to be Dr. Ong. Dr. Ong, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Joseph. And take it away. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna share my share my screen here. Um. So thank you for inviting me. And uh, so today, um, I was I was asked to talk to you guys about uh, um, admissions to university and uh, the details about what what sort of things to score and things like that. But. Uh, um, with the with, with, with the time that we have, it's probably a little bit. I, I thought it might be a little bit more inter interesting to to see, um, to to tell you a little bit about uh, the training and perhaps you know the journey of becoming a doctor and uh, and to see if I can put you off by the end of the by the end of the talk. So I've got fifty minutes to actually try to put you off uh, doing a medical course. I'm just joking. Um, so just some thoughts about being a doctor and whether this is the right thing for you because uh, the last thing we want is when people coming into medicine and uh, after spending many, many years to realize that actually this is actually not quite the thing that I wanted to do and uh, you know how am I going to get out of this and things like that. So towards the end, we hope uh, perhaps we get some question uh, towards the end. And um, so... Why do people want to choose medicine? Usually, uh, these are some good reason or for, for, for good things about medicine where people might consider this is, uh, this is going to be the career for them. Generally, generally speaking, it may have changed over a, a little bit over the years. Uh, generally speaking, most of the time is still regarded as one of the most respect, uh, respected profession. And uh, you, you, you will notice that when you are basically everywhere and uh and according to most of the surveys that's done is always in the top three of the profession that is most trusted so this is this is the good thing of being in the medical fraternity and um and also this personal and professional satisfaction can be very very immense you know um once you in the job in a medical job um it, how, how many people can actually say that they uh uh you know they bring someone back uh from uh, you know when their heart stop and how the how the how the people can how uh, that can can bring their heart uh back on again how to uh you know when people are bleeding profusely how you're going to stop it and prevent things from getting worse and these sort of things uh is actually immense satisfaction once uh once you're getting involved in the team of care and uh you know people that you care for towards the end of their life all sort of things uh they can bring a lot a lot of professional uh satisfaction and uh, personal satisfaction and then also the good thing about the career is there's still a wide, wide range of career that you can uh, choose from it. So it doesn't mean that once you've chosen something, you can get stuck to it. Because a lot of people feel that, you know, I want to be a cardiac surgeon. And uh, uh, from the moment that you're born uh, and until you get to the get the qualification to be a cardiac surgeon and continue being a cardiac surgeon, that is, that's a life of a doctor. But majority of people, a lot of people tend to have some changes. 
uh, myself, for example, you know, I was surgically trained uh, initially. After many years of doing that, I felt that family life and uh, my personal life, it would be a little bit easier for my timing and my children and my family uh, I slowly slip into general practice in the UK. And uh, so I made consciously made a career change in the uh, in 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 family medicine, and uh, once I started doing some managing family medicine, I felt that you know, hey, am I going to spend all my time in this clinic seeing patients? And I sl slowly, slowly branched myself into a financial planning and got involved with a local uh, medical planning that uh, we look after huge sums of money for uh, for local healthcare. So that's a little bit outside medicine, but still within the medical uh, because. From our broad base of medical knowledge, we know where all the funding needs to, needs to go. And towards the end, I went into teaching and things. So there's a lot of, a, a big range of career that you can actually develop from it. Uh, so I do find that, that there's a job that is continuously creating more and more interest and keep on challenging you. Uh, so it's never going to be stale. It's ne never going to be any boring days and things like that. So we talk about good things of trying to be a doctor or being a doctor or becoming one of the doctors in the, in, in, in the, in the family of doctors. And, uh, but the bad things, uh, I need to tell you about bad things as well because the job is incredibly demanding. Things are getting a little bit better in the UK at the moment because of the working hours and, uh, and, uh, and there's a lot of protection by the uh, postgraduate dean to restrict the hours and, uh, and training time for the juniors. But... It itself is a very very time consuming thing. So you you you'll find that the you know I've I've never had this before until I started working as a junior doctor, and the longest uh period of not hitting the bed to go to sleep was fifty six to seventy hours. Uh, sometimes in a stretch, you never get to see your bed. So the the best thing you can get is actually to lie down on the couch uh, next to the operating theatre before you get woken up again to do the next one. Uh, so it can be extremely demanding to, on, on your time and your physical ability to, to uh, uh, just with the job. And not to mention emotionally, because um, you're going to see lots of injury. You're going to see the, uh, some drastic, drastic um, uh, um that serious medical condition, you're going to see lots of blood, you're going to see lots of uh, unsanitary stuff. And uh, so emotionally can be extremely challenging as well. And this is what we're talking about after graduation. So it is it's in itself, it's already a tough road to get through, uh, get through a medical school first, you get into an undergraduate course. And first, it's actually very, very tricky to get in. And uh, let's take UK, for example, most of the university um, the allocation is to supply the local demand of, uh, or, or supply demand of the number of doctors in the country. So majority of medical school will take very few international students. So in our university, for example, is between six to seven, maybe up to seven point five percent of the places are for international. And uh, if we are looking about six or seven percent, uh, talking about definitely about less than 20 spaces for international. That is for the whole uh, international community, not just for people from Malaysia. So, um, so comp competition is very, very high. And the course itself is very, very long because I remember uh, sitting in the, um, in the undergraduate accommodation and uh, one of my friends who did the business studies uh, um, on a Monday morning, uh, when I was trying to wake him up, saying that, guys, come on, are, are, are we not going to lectures? He said, oh, my first lecture is Wednesday. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's very, very different. Uh, I'm not saying that one is better than the other. It's just that uh, the, the course is a lot more intense. And the General Medical Council for the UK yeah, University, the General Medical Council is actually monitoring all your professional be behavior, your attendance, all sorts of things is being monitored over the, over the five years. So it's actually a tough undergraduate course to begin with. The problem is the tough first five years, it's just the beginning because after that, it gets tougher uh, because then it becomes very, very competitive to get into the training, specialist training. In, in particular, in Malaysia, it's incredibly difficult. In UK, yes, the pathway is a little bit more defined and is a bit clearer and uh, there are more spaces of training, but we're still talking about two, three hundred applicants for maybe 
five jobs uh, for the more competitive things. So you might end up not getting exactly the thing that you want to do unless you're prepared to wait and wait and wait to get into the specialty uh, that you want training in. And obviously, with such a long course, the financial cost is uh, going to be more significant. And uh, even after post-graduation, there's still lots of membership fees, there's there lots of exam fees and all sorts of things to get through before you actually get into a uh, sub-specialization and things like that. So these are the kind of the bad things of choosing such a career. So a lot of people chose this kind of career is because uh, nowadays it's probably a bit less uh, because you guys don't watch TV as much. You guys probably more on the TikTok and uh, and uh, probably YouTube probably a little too long way. But anyway, a lot of people watch TV for medical drama thinking, oh, this is so cool. You know, you see George Clooney uh, being a, a medical doctor. This is so cool. And uh, these are the best, uh, perhaps not the best reason. If someone push you into it, your parents or your teacher or someone who's saying, hey, good, good, you don't do medicine. We need a doctor in the family. And uh, this usually are not such a good reason because uh, you're going to get disheartened because it's such a long course that you're going to be taking. And, uh, and, because you come from family doctors, usually you have advantage because you would have seen some of that. Like, for example, would I encourage my children to do it? I will leave it up to them. I'm not going to make them do it, but I will tell them the ups and downs and let them choose themselves. So if they do it because I am one, so it's probably going to be a bad reason. And uh, during the course, we find that a lot of students have difficulties with course courses. Is uh, they, they find that they're too much work and uh, too much effects and uh, there's very very limited, lim limited variety or opportunity for any creativity and uh, because uh, most of the medical subjects are, uh, are, are, are pretty fixed and uh, and some students I, 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 I would think in Elizabeth and, uh, and in, in a, lot, a lot of international school will probably be a little bit a, a lot more advantageous because the learning style uh, that you have been taught since young. Uh, I've observed uh, students from uh, from Alice Smith, from Marlborough, from Epson, from uh, a lot of international school. The, the learning style is actually a very, very good suited learning style to, to, to learn in university because you guys are a lot more independent uh, compared to some of the schools that we observe where the, the, the students are so used to being spoon-fed. So you guys have a little bit of advantage on that. Okay, or a fair bit of advantage uh, to suit yourself into a university. And um, so a lot of students having difficulties is because they felt that actually deep down in their heart, this is not what they wanted to do. And they felt that they're being pushed into it. Okay. And not just all the subjects that we have to learn, all the topics that we have to learn. So a lot of times, a lot of emphasis is being put into communication, the softer skills. So we find that a lot of A student, top students, when they get into a clinical years, they find it a little bit difficult because everything is black and white to them. And uh, when it comes to communication skill, trying to be empathic, how to work with people, usually we find the top, top people will probably find it a little bit difficult to work with people, other people because um, uh, because everyone else is a bit too slow for them. And uh, so especially when you're top student, but we have to mold you into uh, uh, having an ability to work with people because working alone in medicine is never going to be successful. You're going to have to work with a team of people and, uh, and uh, having good communication, having you know good communication skills so your patients will like you and listen to what you want them to do instead of just agreeing with you and walk home and never do anything of your suggestions. And uh, so we need quite a lot of all these soft skills uh, that you will have to learn through the medical school. That's why a lot of people find it very, very difficult. There's a lot of hardcore stuff with all the medical knowledge and uh, effects that you have to learn and at the same time with all the soft skills that you have to develop so sometimes people find it quite tricky to navigate through it so my piece of advice is uh try to get some experience okay so if you do go for any hospital interview uh, uh any medical school interviews and things uh you'll find that you know they'll find they'll want to see if you 
have some kind of experience of what being a doctor is like? Have you spent some time in the hospital? Have you tried something that uh, that can help the community or can, uh, you know, spend some time in a nursing home to see what illness uh, like, what uh, people who are not perfectly well, uh, what they look like, and what sort of experience do you have on caring for people and things like that? So these usually are qualities that university are looking at. So at least they have... So for the university, university do not want to take people in. It's not because university are, uh, are not friendly. It's just because university have to do you justice. Because we can't, yes, you know, when you come into university, we get paid, everyone should be happy. But we just did not want, don't want to take people in if this is not something truly a true calling for them. Because the last thing we want to see after three or four years, students say, oh no, Dr. Ong, I, I, I really shouldn't have come. I, you know, this is some, not something for me. We much prefer people who come in is people that we can nurture into having a, a flourishing career out of the, this degree rather than just people pay fee for three years and walk out of the university without getting anything. So... Uh, university quite like to see people having some of this kind of experience. At least you have some idea of what you're stepping into uh, when you get into university, uh, when you, at least when you get into this, kind, this line of work. Okay, and ask questions. If you see anyone, any doctors, any nurses, or anyone in the medical line, just keep asking questions and to find out uh, uh, what, what it is about. Okay, so... This almost coming to the end. If you thought about all this and still want to do it, go for it. Because if you ask me again, would I do it again? I would definitely do this all over again uh, because it has uh, given me a vast experience and uh, lots and lots of uh, uh, good memory having worked in different hospital, clinic and uh, different places. And uh, it has uh, given me lots and lots of opportunity to, uh, to, to do a lot of things that I enjoy. Okay? Yeah. And I... Shall end there and uh, happy Thank to you, take Dr. any Ron. questions. Uh, uh, so I'll tell you what, we, we will um, pop, do the questions at the end together after the next presentation. So that's fantastic. Um, just And just to say, I know a few people joined the call after my initial introduction. If you want to ask any questions at all, please just add them to the chat function on Zoom. You should find it down at the bottom of your screen. Alternatively, you can email me or Miss Yasmin directly. You should have our email addresses. So either of those fine. If you want to get a question across. Uh, you can see here we sp focus very much on that in terms of the experience side of it. Um, but if you've got technical questions as well, that's fine. Myself, Dr. Ong, Dr. Chien can all answer those. I will tell you at the end of the presentation about another presentation which will focus more on technical, the technical side of it later on next year as well. But I'm going to hand over now to Dr. Chien, who's going to do her presentation for RCSI here in uh, Penang. Thank you very much. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon, um, parents and teachers. I'm Dr. Chien. Moving from Johor to Penang, I'm a uh, senior lecturer from the uh, RCSI and UCD Malaysia campus. So we are on two sides of the peninsula of Malaysia. Well, um, I have three children. One is at the moment overseas working as a doctor. So I've seen my kids went through medical school. Myself, my good medical school, working, specialized. And so is my husband. But I have two other children who are not in medical line. I must say, every single career you chose, you really have to put in the time and the commitment. Nothing is really easy, honestly. Okay, now just to get the interaction, as what Joseph said, um, I like you to hit and hit the um, hit the chat box just to get. A bit interactive. Where do you prefer to pursue your university degree? Can we say some action from you? Just type in the chat box. Overseas. Any more coming? Oh. Overseas. Overseas, overseas. <laughs> All right, okay. 
I think that because you attend the international schools, I think that pretty much says, all right, okay. Now for me today, this is the questions that most people ask. The minute you started the interview, they were asked when you write your business statement, you somehow have to answer these questions. Dr. Ong has answered this really well and he gave both sides of that. I've summarized it in a one slide. To me, the most important one is really a sense of calling and duty towards people. Uh, medicine in general is a very noble profession. Um, we've been through and we are still in the, uh, the COVID pandemic. Look at this, this is what <laughs> Dr. Ong mentioned. And look at this, how appreciative the patients are towards their doctors. Another thing is that, you know, you work for it, you get the title of doctors, all right? Okay, so now you, you, you're you very, very lucky in that your school organized career talk. During our time, no, we have to search. And in fact, we don't get a lot of things online. All right, so assuming, assuming now you want to study medicine. Honestly, there, there are many questions um, pop your heart, your, your mind uh, before you decide, like, um, do I have the right skills to do the course and which university do I choose and what their curriculums, uh, how much would that cost and the entry requirements. Um, once I graduate, um, what, what can I do? These are important research that you need to do, right? So today I'm try I will try to cover uh, some of this, either the next few slides or uh, during the uh, Q&A session with specific reference to the uh, university that I've been working for the last many years. So um, my university is RCSI and UCD Malaysia campus. Okay, do I have the right skill to study medicine? Dr. Ong mentioned about interview. Yes, I conduct interview. Very important is your interest and your motivation. So definitely that is the first thing that we will assess. Are you ready? What have you done up to now that you said this is what you want to do? And um, I, I, I cannot say passion, but definitely a deep interest in it. That, that's really important. If you're not interested in subject, please do not start. And others are very natural, the, um, the academic, the results, um, soft skills, the people skills, communication skills. So in general, in the interview, normally what we want is we assess the maturity of the candidate, your communication skills, and your motivation skills, and also the extracurricular activities. All right. So um, interest is really the most important. Next, just, just to introduce uh, the university that I am in now, it is a foreign campus, all right? This, we've had this, um, the, uh, the RCS and UC Malaysia campus change its name from PMC. So some parents might have heard of PMC, which is Penang Medical College, and now it is RCS and UC Malaysia campus. Foreign branch campus, what it means is when you graduate, you will receive exactly the same qualification as those people who complete the whole five-year course in the main campus, which is overseas. So this particular arrangement has huge, huge advantage in that um, cost. Cost is very important uh, to many people, including me. All right, so it's uh, it definitely cost saving in terms of tuition fee and also the. Uh, the cost of living when you return to Malaysia and you're not compromising in the degree that you get, all right? Okay. So when our student graduates, they get three certificates like that. One is from the National University of Ireland and two other licensees from the Royal College Surgeon in Ireland and the Royal College of Physicians in Ireland. So these are the three certs is exactly set the same as if you graduated from there, all right? So the course itself, five years. You do half, exactly half, two and a half years in Dublin. And the second half, which is the clinical years in Penang, Malaysia. So in Dublin, you can choose either RCSI or UCD. I'll just show you some pictures and tell you about these two university in uh, Dublin and a little bit about RUMC. Okay, um, just a little bit of um, 
interaction. Can we hit the chat box again? Have you been to Ireland? Have you been to Penang? Can we get the fingers going? Oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody's lived in Dublin for five years. Um, visiting anything? Don't be shy, gang. No. Get, 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 those, uh, get those messages onto the chat. Penang, yes. Penang, uh, not been to Ireland. Penang, yes. Okay. Don't be shy. I don't know you, but I'll be happy to see your answer. Okay, all right. Uh, get that. Now, the um, University RCSI, Royal College Surgeon, um, the, this, this drop box is blocking my view. It's RCSI, a Royal College uh, of Surgeon in Ireland. This particular university is, is big, but it is really only focusing on health-related, medical-related subjects only is situated right in the middle of Dublin city. It's uh, modern, even though it's been more than 200 plus years. It's very famous for its large modern medical simulation center. The UCD, this is a university that offer all sorts of degrees, 70 degrees uh, programs, 30,000 students and a huge compound. So if you prefer, uh, it's not in the, right in the middle of city, about five kilometers south of Dublin, not very far, but take a bus about 40, uh, 40 minutes. My daughter used to be there, all right? So this, you see more of the university environment, whereas the RCSI is just all medical related subjects. Um, some nice pictures, all right? <laughs> the clinical simulation center. More. The student services, the gym, the library, the study areas. UCD, look at it, it's very big. 130 hectares. They have the library. The student center, swimming pool, some nice views, student life, right? Um, the event to study overseas. It, it, it's, you know, it's just a phase of life that I think everybody should get out and see this part of the world. And these are the Malaysian students, our students, uh, the photos that they sent me, they have their international nights, the barbecues and the gatherings, the sports activities, and okay, so that's first two and a half years in either RCSI or UCD. You can choose if it's available. If not, then if you are late, then you get whatever that is available. Coming back to Penang, it's a clinical school. So the, the, the campus itself is not very big. When you come to clinical school, the most important one is the hospital because you spend most of your time in the hospitals. We're lucky because we are the only medical schools in the Northern part of Malaysia. And we have three hospitals that you can use, Hospital Palapinang, Hospital Taiping, and Hospital Sabarang Jaya. And Penang, um, Paradise Food is a, a touristy center, is a world culture. That I think most of you have been to Penang. And uh, the student life, you know, the famous shot of students tossing their hats. <laughs> um, just classroom, like just theater. Okay. How to get into this course? If you were out from IGCSE, right, you can do the, uh, the, the foundation course. Once you achieve the enough CGPA, you can join the medical program. If you are out from A level, then you straight away use the A level and join the medical program in case the result is not quite up to it and you can do extra year of pre-medical year. We have that as well. Okay, these are the uh, subjects, preclinical year and clinical subjects. Um, now, um, 
can, can I just have another chat box going? Um, what are your career ambitions? Would you prefer to work locally or globally or any other country, international? So where do you prefer to work? Global, global. If you're Malaysian, you can work in Malaysia. Global, most people would like to get out. <laughs> okay, all right. I have some answer for you. If you, but if the, the graduates from RCSI, you can practice in Ireland, UK, North America, Australia, New Zealand, many, okay. And uh, now we, the most popular ones are those going to UK, but you do not need to sit for exam. It's recognized as a European degree. A career progression, like what Dr. Ong said, many you can choose. Really, those are a bit far for you to get the um, undergraduate degree first. It's really no different from where you graduate from. Just a few um, students, our alumni, uh, this, this Dr. Kaur is in Qatar, he's in Canada, he's in UK, US, Canada, and um, Dr. Jasima is in uh, Ireland. And these are the fresh grads. He's in Malaysia, she's in Ireland, this way in Australia, she's in UK, Ireland, this is in UK. So pretty much uh, a lot of our students are working overseas. As long as you're in Malaysia, you can still work locally. Beyond to go overseas is not a problem as well. Okay, um, this is the QR code uh, to access our website. Um, just so I finished my presentation. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. Um, thank you very much. That's, that's really great. And I think, obviously, what you can see here, we've got two... Um, two doctors from you know uh, different places, and I think as you heard from Dr. Ong's one, um, it is particularly important for medical school students. They do have to look quite broadly, and um, particularly if they're international. Obviously, we have a lot of students interested in the UK, but because of those limited number of places that you have there, you do have to think very broadly about it. And just about all of our non-UK medical school applicants are looking at more than one place, more than one region. So it's incredibly important because of the competitiveness that you do view that. Interestingly, Newcastle, where Dr. Ron works, also have a campus in Malaysia down in Johor. Um, so you have um, a variability there as well. Well, thank you very much. We're going to move on to the Q&A section then. So please feel free to add to the chat or email me directly. Or if you really want to, you can put up your hand and ask a question. Um, I, I'm just going to start off with one, actually, to do you, Dr. Chien, actually. Hi. One of the things when we're advising students about studying um, outside of the UK is that it sometimes can be difficult, and that's definitely true here in Malaysia, after your five years of study, to be able to then get the foundation course or, or, or the housemanship or whatever the, the language being used is for the next two years. How do you find that for your students in terms of being able to move on here in Malaysia from the five-year medical degree onto the two-year following housemanship program? Um, in fact, the Malaysian doctors perform really well. When you, if, if you use the word foundation, yeah, I think you you are indicating this is going to UK. Most of our students who work overseas are in UK. That's over the last two years. And one of the um, professors told me at any point, they will prefer to take Malaysian medical graduates more than other European countries because our system is the same. And honestly, our students are quite, quite, quite okay with their training, yeah. Fantastic, I think Dr. Ong, you've got something to add to that. Well, looks like you've got your hand up. Yeah, um, when you mentioned about uh, foundation year, I think, yeah, like what Dr. Chen was indicating, you, uh, you, 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 you suggest, your suggestion is almost like going to UK to work in the UK. And in the past few years, uh, I've, I've just got to be very, very honest, uh, in the past few years, it has been uh, relatively easy because of the supply and demand uh, issue in the uh, UK. And, uh, so nearly every student who applied to go, they managed to get it. 
saying that our students are always being preferred by the consultants in the uh, in 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 the UK because uh, um, they they are very enthusiastic and they do work hard. And uh, my sister my, my sister actually received a, a, a foundation doctor uh, from uh, from 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 Malaysia and there are a couple of them went to Cambridge then I, I know some of the consultants quite well and uh, and they said your, your, your students are great because we get them to do anything they'll just do anything whereas uh, it's a little bit different that, that they said about uh, yeah, the UK graduate but unfortunately over the next two years it's not going to be as straightforward because what happens is the number of uh, the, the, the UK medical um, uh, uh, the, the UK NHS, they realized that they have, they were short of uh, graduates to become the foundation doctor. So in the last few years, they have created quite a number of uh, medical student spaces to cater for the, to the, for the whole. So over the next two, maybe three years, mm. they will plug the hole, then yeah. it will become harder. And uh, and the, the the GMC has also uh, brought in uh, medical medical school licensing assessment, so they are putting it all in the UK medical school uh, curriculum. So that will be, you know, yeah. a, a further test for people from outside to get in, uh, to to have to do that. Um, so, I just want to be honest. Exactly, last easy. two years were easy. About yeah. hundred percent applicants were successful. And they do 100%. not, well, except yes. SJT, they don't really need to sit for any PLAB or anything, but PLAB's finished. They're going to introduce another exam. MLA. Yeah. MLA, that's right. Yeah, bit yeah. so the MLA, they will have to do mm -hmm. that. Uh, over the next two years, things will get a little bit harder, but we never know. It's difficult to predict, but the number of medical students are increasing in the UK. So they are, they are going to, they, they, they have no choice, even though the, the specialists, the consultant prefer our people here, but uh, but they have they don't get the final say because the 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 national university will, will, will always get a preferred space. Yeah, but the, compared to European graduates, uh, we are now at par with the immigration oh, rules, yes. and we yeah. we are preferred because of our system, our training system, yes. and our graduates are good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If we if we uh were were put on the same group as the Europeans, we will definitely be uh, yeah. head and shoulder ahead. Uh, yeah. but yeah. we can't challenge their local students because exactly. they will get preference. Uh, but you see, local students are increasing. Yeah, it's it's also easier to work in uh, to get a post in Ireland as well. That's all, also yeah. almost hundred percent, especially since COVID. Yeah, that was another again, obviously another region whereby yeah. sometimes. Mm. Yeah, um, we have many. We have many. Extended working was sometimes tricky in Ireland yes. as well. And obviously, the mm -hmm. UK is a guaranteed pretty much pathway through those initial seven years. Um, was always pretty, pretty, pretty solid. It was almost pretty much one hundred percent. Obviously, bearing in mind Dr. Ong's thing about where you might need to go um, mm -hmm. to do that with any level of competitiveness there yes. yeah, for certain places. Okay, now I, I've but Ireland was where uh, Ireland would have been a good choice. If I had, if, if if I could turn back the clock, I I should have taken up my place in Dublin because I have already spent five years in Dublin. So I thought, mm, I'll move to UK and see what happens. I, yeah, I wish I had done a couple of years in Dublin. It was really why why is it that better in Dublin? No, it's just a nice, <laughs> nice it's city. Very, very expensive slower. now. I have to say, very expensive city at the moment. But that's one thing. Now, just because I want to move on to other questions. I've got a terrible feeling there's a tech thing wrong with, and I'm not seeing, unless people have put no questions whatsoever, I'm not sure I'm getting the questions on the chat function. Miss Yasmin, are you able to see any questions from the students on the chat function? Um, no, but uh, because it's already been enabled for everyone to... to okay. Yeah, so supposedly everyone will be able to give... Um, submit their questions here in the chat box. Right, okay. Well, if you can put it on the chat, otherwise, if you're able to be super brave here, I think, and do put the hand up and maybe just do it verbally, that might be the best way of doing it now, or email me directly would be the other way of doing it. 
So I'm just going to give, just because I'm not 100% sure on the, on, the, on the working nature of this chat function right now, if anyone would like to put up their hand and speak or email me directly with the question, we can make sure they get answered over the next 10 minutes or so. Okay. I want to just um, follow back on something. Again, I'm going to ask Dr. Ong this in the first instance, because it very much covers some of the things you were saying. Uh, in terms of that, those key questions about why you'd want to be a doctor, I think the most common things that gets said to me when, I'm, when, I, when, uh, when we are asking students this is because I want to help people. That's normally the most kind of um, basic response that I get. Would you be able to kind of unpack that for us a bit more? It's obviously, it, you know, it obviously has good intentions, but if that's the response that's given, what would you say to a, a student? Oh, that um, to, because I want to help people, that in, uh, in, uh, in itself is actually quite a good start. Because I think that the, the the sense of direction that you know they are going into a profession that is caring and they would uh, uh, want to help people, and uh, but by just saying that I want to help people is probably not quite enough, and uh, you need to at least demonstrate you know there was was there some kind of track record of uh, um, being in some kind of caring role or getting involved in some kind of charity and things like that, and um, but at the same time there are people who. Uh, by their nature, it's just they, they, they just want to help. They want to help people, and we have to know. We have to suss out that that limitation as well, because there are a lot of things that is beyond our ability to 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 sort. Um, you know, there, there are there are many many things that we can't cure. There are many many things we have to accept defeat and things. So we 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 have to gauge that you know the level of enthusiasm. Is it going to be? Uh, is going? Is it going to? Uh, uh, yeah, too much. Um. Uh. If if it comes to things that they can't do to help and uh in for 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 some individuals, so it's a good start. We need more details, but at the same time, there's a limitation that we need to. I think we often will say that you can help somebody by being a tax accountant. And you can help somebody by doing lots of different roles. Um, so that, that's just maybe a starting point. But then the specifics of that role and how you help are, are what we try and dig into. Um, now, we've got a really good question on the chat now. Fantastic. It seems if you use direct message, we've probably got this set up wrong. I apologize. Um, um, how do I know which profession I should become once I get a medical degree? So it's very much in that, again, obviously, the medical degree in the UK, rel relatively standardized. I know there is some variation in the way they're taught, but obviously the bigger decision then it comes afterwards in terms of specialization. So Dr. Ong, if I just stick with you, how did you come about it? And what, what is the process that students you're seeing now after their five year medical degree using to select where they're going to go next? Okay, um, so the, the, that's why in the first five years, nowadays uh, it, it's, it's a um, people tend to choose their sub-specialization quite early uh, because that's the general things are moving in, in that direction. So during medical school, especially in the clinical years, it's actually very important to, exp uh, to, to give enough exposure to students. And uh, the more exposures they get, the better um, informed choice that they're going to make. And, uh, but saying that, once... once once you get into a training pathway, it doesn't mean that you can't take you. you, you uh, I have known of cardiothoracic surgeon has uh, changed the career path into general practice, and uh, and one of my one of my um, partners in uh, uh, in County Durham where I was working, he was an ops and gynae uh, specialist. He was the head of department of the of the hospital almost, and because of lifestyle and personal uh, life, and went back onto the training and uh, and went into general practice. So there's there's quite a lot of changes that you can still make, uh, but when it comes to something that is ultra competitive, it will it may be a little bit tricky to get into it, um, but it's, it's it's not that never you you are unable to change. Uh, but usually with the first five years of medical school, there's enough exposure. Once they start getting into the foundation year, when they are running around in the hospital, the likelihood is they will end up uh, 
uh, picking up um, uh, different sort of uh, jobs and what they like. And obviously in the internet, and I've got funny slides that uh, somewhere in my computer, there's, you know, there's basically there's something for everybody in medicine. Uh, you know, some of the funny slides that they put in, if you're afraid of the, if you're afraid of the, of the dark, don't be a radiologist, uh, be some something else. If you're afraid to speak to people, then chose a career in pathology because everyone will see what we are dead body. But uh, uh, it, it, it's just a, a funny slide, but it's just trying to indicate that there's almost something something for anybody. Fantastic. And, and Dr. Chen, you, you, you're going to add to that? Yes. The um, summer elective is very important as uh, the exposure. If you think that this is, Probably what I like, I just want to see how people function and what are the, the specialties like, what sort of cases I'll be seeing. Try that. And you can exclude or you can expand further. University uh, medical school, they have summer elective during the holiday. Medical students don't get a lot of holidays and everybody will get three months. You probably get like six weeks the most. Even that six weeks, the really hard working one will do their research. <laughs> So that's all you get. Once you are third year, third year or second year, you get only six weeks compared to three months of summer break. Yeah, that it's it's definitely very intensive. I mean, I think that came across in both your presentations, really, how much yeah. work it is. I mean, it, I, I think Dr. Ong's thing about, about the MISP study students still being in bed on the Wednesday, you know, that, that is a, there's a certain truth to that, you know, and I think things do change over time. And, you know, a lot of our students are going to very competitive universities to all sorts of subjects, but medicine is still that very tough, very demanding combination of high academics and vocational training that, that does take an awful lot of time. Can I, this is something that comes up quite um, frequently at the moment, um, which is about, uh, weirdly, we've actually seen quite a rise in med students in, over there. It was definitely for a while our numbers were starting to go down. And, and those students that may would have been eligible to go into it, who may have been the typical students that did, were going into kind of similar things. They're going into biomedical engineering. They're going into pharmaceutical sciences. And obviously, these areas are becoming more complex and more prevalent around it. What, I mean, what is it like being um, a, a general practitioner of any kind, obviously GP in its sense, but even a, a, a surgeon now, well, you've got so much more input coming from all these different areas. Has it changed the profession um, quite a lot in the last 10 years? Either of you can go for that one. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I, I think with all the advancement in medical technology, uh, it definitely has changed the, it changed the landscape in medicine. And uh, now people are getting more and more subspecialized into area. And we were, uh, I, I remember when I first started training in, in, in surgery, uh, my boss at the time were happy to, to, to take out the parts of bowels and cut out some blood vessels uh, up to the neck and taking the thyroid out and uh, did a breast surgery. You know, all sorts of things uh, they can get their hands on it. Um, I'm not to, and he's pretty good at all of them. Uh, but saying that with all the advancements, you know, uh, all the technology and all the new um, um, uh, new new robots that's available and new treatment that's available, uh, it start to narrow and narrow down uh, the, the the field that people do. There was almost a joke that uh, there will be soon having a a left kidney specialist and a right kidney specialist <laughs> with, 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 with so much of uh, information onto each each and every organs. And uh, it also changed the landscape of, of, of the general practice that uh, we're almost becoming more, you know, with, you to, with all the simple stuff, but uh, when it comes to the, the bigger things, we're almost turning ourselves into like a top conductor of a... Uh, of, a, of an orchestra to to get everybody together to to uh, to the multidisciplinary kind of team to look after some more complicated cases uh so it's definitely changed quite significantly from uh from my point of view I so I mean it emphasizes your teamwork thing earlier that yeah. it is more of a almost like a film director or like you said a conductor then it's a very mm. it's a very it is a different role and there are some different skills and interests that the student will need in order to if they're mm -hmm. going to want to long yeah. career in it. Um, Dr. Chien, if you, is it the same here in Malaysia as well? 
Well, I worked in uh, Australia and New Zealand for quite a number of years before I returned to Malaysia. So when I came back, I only joined the government services for three years and then I became an academic. I suppose the primary care system here is very different compared to those in the UK, in the Australia, it's, it's quite different. Um, it's quite a long way <laughs> to talk about primary health care here. But I agree with Dr. Ong, if you talk about how the government is trying to, um, to I must say, to improve uh, with the review of transformation, where now general practitioner, we are managing HIV patients, whereas previously it's very much infectious disease. It is, it's kind of downgrade to like a diabetes and hypertension for HIV, hepatitis C, we treat, um, TB, all this chronic disease has become part of general practitioner. Previously, it has to go to the specialty. So that's definitely changed for the Malaysian scene. Mm. Okay, fantastic. Listen, I, th I think we're coming to the end now. I think, I think it's been a fantastic chat. Really interesting. Really fantastic to hear. If you didn't get a question answer today, really sorry, but we, we will get another opportunity. Um, in the new year, we are going to have... Um, another medical talk, which is going to be done by St Andrews and Glasgow in Scotland. And, and one of the things we're going to focus on there is the different ways in which they assess applications. So we can get some, some of that more technical stuff about uh, UCAT, BMAT, um, other the ways in which each medical school uses these types of things, uses MLI interviews and direct interviews. Some of that real technical content we'll cover in our separate talk there. But I think this has been a real kind of brilliant insight into why you might want to go into medicine and what the overall career path look like and some of the areas in which it's changing um, because of technology and other areas. So it's been a fantastic talk. So and Dr. Chi and Dr. Rong, thank you very much. Wonderful. If you're able just Thank to you. stay on the line. Thank for, you. Yeah, if you're able to stay on the line for a tiny bit longer. Um, students, if you have a qu question that you do want to ask directly just at the end, stay on the line. You might not want to in front of so many people and you can ask any of us something directly. Otherwise, students and parents who have come onto this call, thank you so much. And nice turnout. And uh, this will be available as a recording as well. So if there's anything you wanted to go back over, you'll be able to do so too. But I'd just like to say thank you very much for coming and have a really great evening. Thank you very much.